Hey everybody, The Wealthy Marketer here. This is vlog number 13. And as always, I'm here to help you earn, invest, and live your best life through digital marketing and becoming an all-in entrepreneur. In today's vlog, I'm gonna be uh, sharing some advice for financial advice for 20-somethings. So when I think back now to when I was in my early 20s and my mid-20s, there's so many things that I would have done different from a financial standpoint. And unfortunately, I didn't have anyone to provide me with logical, sound, forward-looking advice. Um, but I, I have learned the tricks of the trade, I know my way around things, and I am much wiser today in the financial uh, realm. Um, I'm, I'm much wiser today in the financial realm, so much to the point where I'm currently mentoring my own child, who just turned 20, believe it or not, um, on how to uh, build wealth, uh, how to invest, and how to ensure that he makes strong financial decisions as he transitions into adulthood. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you guys a little bit of perspective on things that I would look out for um, if I was in my 20s, let's call it 20, mid 20s, pushing on to 30. Uh, there's a huge opportunity for you guys to get things right um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that this vlog will give you guys some tips to work with. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is um, debt. Let's say, for example, you just finished school um, and you've had to take on debt, okay? Perhaps you have some credit card debt, uh, you have some student loans, um, you borrowed money from friends and family, uh, you have a student line of credit, it could come in, uh, you have OSAP or some sort of government loan. It can come in so many different ways, shapes, and forms. There's most students, they end up in debt. And when they finish school, this is the thing they worry about most. Um, my advice to you is understand that it's unfortunately that, that you are in debt. <laughs> um, but now that you are in debt, um, it's going to be hard to get rid of it and then get ahead, okay? Um, and then once you get rid of it, you're gonna end up taking on more debt for other reasons. So don't stress too much about the debt. Obviously, service it, uh, make payments, um, try to pay it down slowly over time, but don't just throw all your money at the debt right off the bat, okay? Um, your priority should be now that you're done school and you're working, you need to start investing your money and then servicing the debt alongside your investing. So you want to invest first and then pay off the debt after, okay? Because you don't wanna get in the habit of just paying down debt all the time. Because if all you're doing is paying down debt, you're, not, you're never gonna have money to invest. You're never gonna have money to, um, to get ahead in life. Okay, so don't, the debt's there, don't worry about it too much. Service it, make your monthly payments, and over time it will go away. Don't rush getting out of it, okay? That brings me to my next point, um, investing. So uh, you need to start investing right away. If you are done school and you have started to work, pretty much the moment you get a job, the next thing that you should go and do is open up a low fee um, self-managed brokerage account with, with either Quest Trade or Wealth Simple um, and start transferring a, a nice portion of your paycheck from the paycheck into your investment account, okay? Even if you're transferring 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 dollars a check, ideally, minimum 100 per paycheck, upwards of 500 would be a good starting point. Get in the habit of making your investment portfolio your top priority, okay? And as you're putting money from your paycheck into your uh, investment account, whether it be Quest Trade or Wealth Simple or Robinhood if you're in America, um, you're going to start investing this money into the stock market. Okay, and there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Uh, the, the easiest way, 
the way that Warren Buffett recommends it, especially to the people starting out, is just find a low fee index fund that tracks the S&P 500 and just uh, try to contribute to that, that fund on a monthly basis. Even if you're buying one share in a low fee index fund that tracks the S&P 500, and that share is $300 per share, so maybe you're buying one of these shares every month, that piece of the S&P 500 is going to compound over time because America will continue to grow and your investment in America will grow with it, okay? The S&P 500, you're investing in the top 500 companies um, in America. So you're investing in Amazon, you're investing in Tesla, you're investing in Google, Facebook, all the companies that you know and use, you're investing in them with the S&P 500. And every time you buy a share in the S&P 500, that literally rep represents a paycheck into the future because perhaps a share in the S&P 500 is 300 today, um, but five years from now, it could end up doubling, being 600. 10 years from now, it could go to um, 700, 800, 900. Eventually, a share in the S&P 500 will likely equate to over $1,000. So if you're continuing to invest in the S&P 500, you're making paychecks for your future. Okay. Once you get beyond uh, building up um, your first amount of money in index funds, then you can uh, look at investing in individual companies. So you can find companies that you know and you believe in. You can go do the research. You can make sure that they have their good management, they're growing, um, they have a good balance sheet, uh, they have cash in the bank, they have minimal debt. Um, a uh, good earning per share, uh, a good overall uh, price to earnings ratio, all these things. You, you, can, learn, you can learn how to analyze a company um, and you wanna invest in companies that you know and believe in and you see they have good potential for growth into the future. People that invest in these kind of companies are the people that are laughing five, 10 years down the road, okay? So you need to get in the habit of investing. Um, first, again, with uh, low fee index funds that track the S&P 500 or other markets, and then doing your research and, and building up positions in individual companies. This stuff is actually not that hard. It's not as hard as, as you, you, you might think it is, okay? But it's very important that you get this, this process started early and you never stop contributing a portion of your paycheck into your investment account okay number three i would say as far as investing goes stay away from financial advisors and investing with the big banks these people will it's highly likely that these people will misguide you and i've been down the road myself when i was in my 20s i wanted to get started with investing i sat down with a financial advisor um, on two or three different occasions and you know where I ended up getting with them? They sold me life insurance. They sold me life insurance, and then they said that we'll get to the stocks, and then we never got to the stocks. So I just ended up having life insurance, but no opportunity to invest in the stock market. It was extremely disappointing and extremely uh, misguided, misguided um, financial advice. So stay away from those advisors because nine times out of 10, um, they're gonna sell you insurance and leave you hanging. Um, and one time out of 10, they may get you into the stocks, but they're gonna give you um, some kind of like not so good investment opportunity. Um, so the technology's there, the information's there, you're far better off to just do it yourself, self-educate, um, self-manage, and just get in the habit of contributing um, the top line of your, of your paycheck directly into your investments before anything else, okay? This is huge, huge advice, very huge advice. Please act on it. If you are in your 20s and you're listening to me right now and you haven't got started with investing, please take this advice seriously. I'm telling you, you will, this will change everything for you, okay? Uh, number four, um, I think you should go out there and find a job that the job description suits what you're looking to do with your career. 
Um, you want to find a job with a, a good company. So you want to make sure it's a company, it's not a fly by night thing. It's not a company that's going to take advantage of you. Uh, you want to get a job with a good quality company that has a good product and service offering and you know you can grow with them. And ideally, they're paying you a fair salary. Okay, it doesn't have to be a lot, but you don't want it to be a little. You want to find something fair um, that will allow you to cover your expenses and also have the opportunity to invest. Um, I think fair is the best target as far as starting out. And then you can grow it from there as you get more and more experience. Okay? Um, number five, uh, avoid taking on any obligations. So if you can avoid uh, taking on the expense of a car, um, or if you can avoid taking on um, having to rent, you know, ideally if you can stay with um, friends or family, uh, it's very important that you avoid taking on um, expenses at, for as long as possible <laughs> and um, so so let me rephrase this avoid the cars avoid the rent avoid um, taking on any new debt any toys all this kind of stuff avoid it all um, if you can stay with a family member stay with them and and work hard and just continue to funnel your money into your investment accounts, okay? Do this for as long as possible, as long as you possibly can within reason. Um, obviously, you may be in a situation where you are gonna need a car, um, but try to position yourself as far as where you live and, and where you um, work um, to the point where the car is not needed, okay? Having a car in your 20s is a huge expense. You're better off without it if you can pull it off. Okay. Um, and same thing with rent. I know it's nice to have freedom and, and be away from family and to do our own thing. Um, some of us have to rent or we have to live on our own. Um, but for those that can stick it out with their parents, please do. And while you are sticking it out with your parents, again, make sure that you are investing a nice chunk of your paycheck off every single check. Very, very important. If you can, if you can get this nailed down in the first, let's call it two to three or three to five years of your uh, career, you are going to be way ahead of the game. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, I think we're on number six. Uh, so with number six, I, I highly recommend that you uh, look at advancing your skills. Okay. Add more tangible skills to your wheelhouse. Uh, take a, an online course, take a um, continuing education course at a, at a, as a, at a physical uh, location, whether it be a boot camp or you know, university or college. Um, take courses uh, that are gonna have you enhance your skill set um, and do it with um, things where the, the skill is in demand. So you can learn how to do video, you can learn how to design, you can learn how to do social media management, Facebook ads management, Google ads management. Um, you can learn how to write, um, you can learn how to code. There's so many tangible skill sets out there that are, that are high in demand in today's uh, digital world, digital first world. Um, you can very easily go out there and develop these skills. Believe that you can do it, you can do it. You can put anything you can do anything you put your mind to, okay? Continue to develop those skills. Develop, have multiple skills to leverage, okay? Because what that's gonna allow you to do is number one, you're gonna have uh, more marketable, you're gonna be more marketable in the job market. And number two, let's say for example, you wanna start a business, you wanna start a side hustle, you're gonna be able to do it because you're gonna have the skills that are needed, where you're gonna wear multiple hats. You're gonna be able to do it. Um, and, and do it confidently and, and, and make something successful happen, okay? So keep developing those skills, those tangible skills. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, a few more things, okay? Um, I think this is important. Number seven, I'm gonna say no wedding. No, if, if, if you found love and you, you're with somebody and you guys want to get engaged and get married and do all this kind of stuff, that's great. You can do that. 
but do not spend your time, effort, money on a wedding, um, especially if you're paying for it yourself. It is an absolute waste of money, okay? An absolute waste of money. If mommy and daddy, they want you to have a nice day and they, they want to front the bill and they want to pay it and, and have the aunts and uncles and the cousins and all their friends show up and have a nice celebration, that's fine. But do not self-fund your own wedding. Do not self-fund your own wedding. Go to City Hall, get married. Um, go to uh, an island, get married. Go to Vegas, get married. The, if you can like spend a minimal amount of time and money on preparing for a wedding, <laughs> that would be one of the wisest things you could do as someone in your 20s or even in, in your 30s. Avoid it if possible. Avoid it if possible. Do not take on that expense. You'd be far better off to uh, compile money and continue to build your investment account or your stock portfolio or compile money and, and put it into real estate. Okay? Do not waste your time with a wedding. Very, very important um, information here. Very important. Because um, what's going to happen, you're going to have the wedding, and if you're self-funding the wedding, everyone will be happy, they'll enjoy it and everything like that, and then they'll forget about it years down the road, you know? The only one that's going to re really remember their wedding is, is you, right? Um, but I think that it's not a good use of money for someone young in their careers, whether you're in your 20s or your 30s. Stay away from self-funding your weddings, okay? Um... And there's one more thing that I wanted to share in this vlog. It was very important. What was it, guys? Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Oh, yeah, real estate. So um, I have some really good advice for you guys in real estate. So I think that it's very important to own your own home. Um, just bear in mind that when you do own your own home, you don't want to put all your money into real estate. You want to have a balance between having an, an investment or stock portfolio where you're constantly contributing to it and having real estate alongside. Don't take all the money out of your uh, real estate, or sorry, out of your investment, your stock portfolio, to buy real estate. Maybe take half, right? Um, but don't put it all into real estate. You wanna have a balance between an investment account with a stock portfolio and real estate working side by side. So you're building equity in real estate and you're also building up your stock portfolio. Do both. But most important is you have your investment account first, real estate second. Having a combination of those two things in that order um, is going to make the world of a difference. It's going to make you much more financially stable, much more financially healthy, and you'll sleep better at night knowing that you are on the right track as you become a mature adult. So that's what I got for you guys today. Um, I hope this information helps. Um, I'm just speaking from experience and yeah, just looking out for you guys and, and want nothing but the best for you. Thanks very much and I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.